Now that we have a basic understanding of the principles of flight, let's take a look at how we use the four forces to control the airplane through flight. To do this, we use four fundamental maneuvers, straight and level flight, turns, climbs, and descents. Every flight maneuver, whether basic or advanced, is based off a combination of these four maneuvers. The first and most basic maneuver is straight and level flight. Straight and level flight is flight in which a constant heading and altitude are maintained. However, this is far from a hands-off maneuver. Pilots will have to make small corrections from time to time for deviations in heading and altitude caused by bumpy air, wind changes and unintentional turns, climbs, and descents. It is important to remember that when flying these maneuvers, the pilot's primary focus should be looking outside on the horizon, with only a quick glance inside to check the instrument panel. In fact, the FAA recommends that pilots should keep their focus outside 90% of the time and inside only 10% of the time. The pitch attitude for level flight is obtained by referencing the aircraft's nose with the horizon. If the plane starts to climb, then the pitch attitude is too high and should be lowered. If you are losing altitude, the plane's pitch is too low and should be raised. To maintain a constant heading, simply keep the plane in level flight laterally. To do this, you can just look out the side windows and compare both of the airplane's wingtips with the horizon. Both wingtips should be the same distance above or below the horizon. If one wing is higher than the other, the airplane is turning. Although both the airspeed and angle of attack control the aircraft's lift, in straight and level flight, the throttle is primarily used to maintain a desired airspeed, and the elevator is used to control the altitude. Keep in mind that the pitch necessary to maintain level flight is not always the same. Since lift increases with airspeed, the slower you are flying, the more you have to pitch up to maintain your altitude. In normal cruise flight, when an aircraft is maintaining a constant airspeed, thrust and drag are equal. If the pilot increases their engine output via the throttle, the engine and propeller will spin faster and generate more thrust. This will accelerate the aircraft, as there will then be more thrust than drag. As the aircraft accelerates, more drag will be created, and eventually the amount of drag will equalize with the amount of thrust, and the aircraft will stabilize and maintain its new cruise airspeed. Again, remember that as you increase your airspeed, you will need to lower the aircraft's pitch, or you will start climbing. When needing to slow down, the pilot will usually decrease the throttle, resulting in less thrust being generated. There will then be more drag than thrust, and this will cause the aircraft to slow down. As the aircraft slows down, the pilot will need to smoothly and continuously pitch up more to maintain their altitude. As the aircraft slows down, the amount of drag created will also decrease, and similar to before, the amount of drag will eventually equal the amount of thrust, and the aircraft will, once again, maintain its airspeed. To get a plane to climb, we need to create more lift than weight. Pilots typically do this by pitching up and adding power. As an airplane enters a climb, it changes its flight path from level to a climb attitude. In a climb, weight still acts straight down, no longer perpendicular to the flight path, and because it's aligned in a rearward direction, this causes an increase in total drag. Additional thrust is required to balance out the forces. To return to straight and level flight from a climb, it is necessary to initiate the level off at approximately 10% of the rate of climb. For example, if the airplane is climbing at 500 feet per minute, Leveling off should start 50 feet before the desired altitude. After the airplane is established in level flight at the desired altitude, climb power should be retained temporarily to allow the airplane to accelerate to a cruise airspeed. Once the aircraft has reached the desired cruise speed, the power can be reduced to an appropriate cruise setting. Keep in mind that as the aircraft accelerates in level flight, it will want to continue to climb. Because of this, the pilot must continually keep decreasing the aircraft's pitch to maintain that altitude, until the aircraft has finally stabilized. Descents occur when the amount of lift produced is less than the weight of the aircraft. Pilots can pitch down to reduce their angle of attack, or reduce their airspeed by reducing the output of the engine or both. 
Different techniques will be used for different situations. Unlike climbs, the forward component of weight in a descent will add additional thrust to the aircraft. Just like with climbs, when leveling off from a descent, the pilot must lead the altitude by 10% of the vertical speed, or they will end up overshooting their target altitude. Turns are the last fundamental maneuver that all pilots must master. A turn is made by simply banking the wings in the direction of the desired turn. Although it may seem that only the ailerons are used to control a turn, there is much more to it. Let's look at an airplane that is about to make a left turn. Like we saw in the previous lesson, a bank is made through the use of ailerons. The aileron on the right wing rotates down, and the aileron on the left wing rotates up. This makes the right wing create more lift than the left wing, which will roll the airplane to the left. When an airplane is in a straight and level attitude, 100% of the lift produced is used to counteract weight. However, when an airplane is in a bank, the lift produced follows the direction of the bank and no longer is directed straight up. With this new attitude, we still have our vertical lift, which opposes weight, but we also now have a horizontal component of lift. This horizontal component is actually what causes a plane to turn. Now, because some of the lift is used to turn the plane, that means that there is less vertical lift holding the plane up in the air. If nothing was done about this, every time a plane turned, it would lose altitude. Therefore, the total lift needs to be increased to get the vertical component to still equalize the weight. This is done by slightly pitching up a few degrees, just enough to maintain our altitude. But we aren't done yet. Since the right wing of the airplane is producing more lift, it is also producing more drag. As we are trying to make our left turn, the added right drag will actually pull the nose to the right. This is something called adverse yaw. In order to counteract this, the pilot should also press the rudder pedal in the direction of the turn, in this case left, to help force the nose in the correct direction. So, as we turn to the left, we use left aileron, left rudder, and a little bit of back pressure on the elevator. That means we are using all three primary flight controls at the same time. Different bank angles will require different amounts of control input, but with some practice, it'll become second nature. When it's time to roll back out to straighten level flight from a turn, the pilot must lead the rollout before arriving at the target heading. Because a plane will continue turning as long as the wings are banked, the plane will continue turning while the rollout is happening, so the general rule is to lead the rollout by one half of the amount of bank. For example, in a 30-degree bank, the rollout should begin 15 degrees before the desired heading. Also, remember that as the rollout is occurring, the vertical component of lift is returning. So, the additional elevator pressure that was added for the turn should be smoothly and simultaneously reduced. Remember that the four fundamentals are the foundation for every flight maneuver. By ensuring you have a solid foundation of these fundamentals, you can aid in making your flight training a breeze.